my trip to Eswatini, formerly known as Swaziland, I thought it would be helpful to share with you a few things that I think you should know before visiting the country. Eswatini is a tiny country that covers a modest 17,364 square kilometers and is home to approximately 1.2 million people. The nation is known for its deep-seated cultural heritage. It's a mountainous country with magnificent landscapes. The two main cities are Mbabane, which is the capital, and Manzini, the commercial hub. Despite its diminutive size, Eswatini stands tall with its unique charm and a people bound together by a singular, harmonious culture. In case you're confused about the name of the country, Swaziland's name was changed to Eswatini in 2018, but it is still often referred to as Swaziland, especially internationally. So I will be using the two names interchangeably. Let's get into it. It's really easy to travel to Swaziland. If you're coming from overseas, you have to fly into OR Tambo International Airport in Johannesburg, South Africa. From there, you have three options. One, you can take a 50 minute flight from OR Tambo International in Johannesburg to King Mswati III International in Swaziland. Once you get to the airport in Swaziland, you still have a 90 kilometer drive from the airport to the capital city of Mabane, which you can do either by cab or by using an airport shuttle. Two, there are airport shuttles that travel from OR Tambo in Johannesburg straight to the capital city of Swaziland, Babani, every single day. It costs uh, 750 Emalangeni for a one-way trip and it's really convenient. The last option is to drive yourself there. You can rent a car in Johannesburg and then drive the 400 kilometers to Babane. It's a really nice drive because the roads are really good. In my opinion, Renting a car in Johannesburg and driving yourself there or taking the airport shuttle from Johannesburg uh, through to Swaziland are the best options because they have the least logistical hassles. All you need is your passport. There are no special vaccinations required to enter the country. If you are driving yourself, however, just make sure you have your car registration uh, papers with you. If it's a rental, then the rental company will provide you with a letter to say that they permit you to take the car across the border. Oshuk Ongwenya border is the only border that operates for 24 hours. If you're using any other border, just make sure that you check what the border operating times are because they vary across the different borders. The currency in Eswatini is called Emalangeni or Lilangeni singular. You can use South African rands in uh, Swaziland. However, you can only use notes. Most places will not take coins. So if you want to, you can bring cash from Johannesburg because you will be able to use it in Swaziland as well. Hotels, supermarkets, restaurants and places of business will take Visa card and MasterCard. However, informal places of business like markets will only take cash. So you do always have to make sure you have cash with you when you're traveling within the country. If you take cash with you from Johannesburg across the border, please note that there is a 15,000 emalangeni or 15,000 rands limit. Anything above that you have to declare with customs. I don't recommend relying on public transport in Swaziland simply because it's just too complicated for someone who's not from the country and also it doesn't reach everywhere. So the best option is, well, rent a car if you're driving from Johannesburg. Alternatively, when you get into the country, if you're using other options to get there, is to rent a car when you get into the country. There are cabs, of course, in the country, but if you're gonna rely on cabs to get around, it's gonna be very expensive, simply because there's no Bolt or Uber service. So when you call a cab, you call the person from wherever they may be parked and they have to drive all the way to pick you up and they charge you for that cost. So the cheapest and again, most convenient thing is just to rent a car. There is no best time of the year to travel based on weather because the weather is beautiful all year round. The winter months is really just two months, June and July, but the average temperatures are about 18 to 22 degrees Celsius during the day. And the rest of the year, during spring and summer, the temperatures average between 28 and 34 degrees Celsius. 
As much as there isn't a best time to visit based on weather, there are, however, ideal times to visit if you want to witness the country's big cultural ceremonies and festivals. The two areas that I recommend that you stay in are Mbabane or a town that is about 10 kilometers from Mbabane called Ezulini. If I was to pick one, I would say Ezulini because that is the most tourist friendly area. It has the most options for restaurants and hotels and just things to do in general. Accommodation options between Mbabane and Ezulini include modern hotels like the Hilton Garden Inn or Happy Valley Hotel and Casino both of which are located a walking distance away from shopping centers. There are also a number of lodges and if you're adventurous, you can even stay in a traditional Swazi hut. If you're on a tight budget, backpacker accommodation is also available. Eswatini is known all over the world for its grand cultural festivals and ceremonies. The only thing is that the exact dates are never known far in advance. This is a cultural thing as well. So I do have the months in which these events are normally held, but for the exact dates, you'd have to follow the Eswatini Tourism Authority Facebook page or their website because they are published there as soon as they are announced. The three key events that you want to look out for are the Bukanu Festival in February and March. The Bukanu Festival is a celebration of the start of the Marula fruit season. Traditional Marula beer called Bukanu is brewed by women and at the beginning of the season they come together to deliver the drink at the rural residence and dance to welcome the season. The Umhlanga Redance in August. The Umhlanga Redance is a week long event in which almost 40,000 young girls go and cut reeds to present to the Queen Mother in Lovgaz. The reed is used to maintain the windbreaks around her royal residence. The event culminates in two days of festive dancing. And the Inkwala ceremony, which takes place in December. The Inkwala ceremony is Eswatini's most important cultural event. Although sometimes described as a first fruit ceremony, it's actually a spiritual event of cleansing and renewal in readiness for the new year. The dates of this ceremony are derived from ancestral astrology and hence never known far in advance. However, the event is generally held between the last week of December and the first week of January. One thing that I do have to warn you about though, 
Please be aware that if you attend any cultural events in Eswatini, that you do have to dress appropriately. For women, that means you cannot wear pants to attend these events, nor can you wear a short skirt. For men, it's usually something like you can't wear a hat or a cap um, that isn't a traditional headgear. If in doubt, consult your tour guide or any Swazi honestly on the street will tell you because they will turn you away if you're not dressed appropriately. The last event I want to mention, it's not a cultural event, but it is one of the biggest arts and music festivals in Africa and people from all over the world come to witness this event. It's called the MTN Bushfire Festival. It's a three-day festival that takes place over a weekend, usually on the last weekend of May. This one is of course a paid event. Tickets go on sale way in advance though, usually about eight months in advance the tickets are already on sale because they sell out pretty quickly. But that means you also have plenty of time to plan if you want to attend this one. Swaziland is safe. It's not even ranked on the data site Statista, which lists the countries with the highest crime rates in Africa. However, as you would do when you go to any foreign country, you exercise some common sense. <laughs> Swati are very polite and friendly people. You will rarely come across somebody who is unpleasant. So as a tourist, be polite in return. Things like greeting strangers is normal there. When you walk past somebody, you say hello. If you walk into a room full of people, whether you know them or not, you greet them. If you ask somebody for something before you ask the question, you greet them first. If you do not greet, it is considered impolite. Last but not least, Swaziland is very relaxed, okay? There is no hurry in that country. So if somebody's taking a little bit too long with your order or taking a little too long to help you with something, it's just the way things are and it's just the way people are. There really just is no hurry. So take a chill pill and relax. <laughs> That's it you guys, if I missed anything, you are welcome to ask me in the comments and I will get back to you. Swaziland is a beautiful hidden gem and I do hope you get to visit one day. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>